Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the care and propagation of the Episcia. There are actually many varieties of this and Episcia in Greek means Episkios, which means shaded. So these guys are actually endemic to Central and South America and they're actually grown naturally in shade. And as you can see here, it actually looks really beautiful trailing out of this pot. But in nature, they actually clamor over the forest floor and they're stoloniferous. I don't know if I said that correctly, which means that they actually put out stolons, which is these babies, and they all have the potential of becoming a plant. So as you can see, this is going to be a very enjoyable and easy plant to propagate. But because of these stolons, they make really, really beautiful hanging baskets and they're uh, main stem don't really get woody at all and they do flower they have these really beautiful flowers I'm going to insert some clips on the screen I've only got about four or five varieties of these and I'm going to insert some of the b-rolls on the screen to show you what the other uh, varieties look like and they're all beautiful this is just the one that I happen to have at, at home I grow this indoors this is getting really good uh, bright shade which is a lot of indirect light with maybe a little bit of direct sunlight in the afternoon um, these guys actually like to be in a little bit of a direct sunlight even though in nature they grow in the shade and I have seen them grown in full sun although I don't recommend for you to put these out in full sun but in my uh, tour video of Susie's garden I noticed there was a hanging basset growing directly in a full sun. This plant is highly adaptable to our care and I know that some of you guys struggle with these so I'm gonna quickly share the care. So in terms of light, medium would medium light would give them very long internodes it would be very slow growing because this is actually very fast growing and they just won't be so happy so try to give it i would say very very bright shade bright indirect light if you can give it a little bit of direct sunlight that would be amazing in terms of watering uh, the trick here is to actually to give it very very airy potting mix that is watered very frequently so i water this guy every day it's living in my forest floor potting mix and if i do give this my general purpose potting mix i would water it maybe every two days or so although i'm an advocate for never watering your plants on a schedule because every day the weather is different temperature humidity the brightness uh, when it's very bright out when it's hot out this plant actually drinks up a little bit more water so my again <laughs> to summarize i water it very frequently i don't let it dry out completely but i don't let it sit in water either as with most other house plants so the trick is to just give it very airy potting mix and just water it often like i would say daily or twice uh, once every two days. Fertilize is the same way with other house plants. I don't really have any pest pressures on these. I'm quite surprised because of these uh, leaves here. I would imagine that they would be very prone to mealybugs and spider mites and I have no issues with those pests or whatsoever. Although I've had an African violet that was attacked by mealybugs nearby. And African violet is in the same family as this. It's in the Gusneria CA family. But they are, I guess the flowers are quite a trumpet-like shape and uh, color but yeah this is a very easy plant to care for in my experience in terms of humidity I, I have a feeling these guys actually do want to be in a bit of a higher humidity so you may have it a uh, challenge growing these in winter you know dry air conditions in low light uh, so if you can give it a little bit of a hack with greenhouse and all that if you live in those climates it will be really helpful for these plants but for me, humidity hasn't been an issue. Again, I grew this indoors, the humidity is a bit lower indoors and outdoors, they're happy either way. And if you struggle with this plant, it's actually very advisable for you to just take the cuttings and propagate away uh, because the new uh, plant that's grown in your condition would be much, much more adapted to your uh, conditions. And these guys, they sport really, really beautiful silvery or shiny leaves. And all of them have different patterns and color combinations. But generally speaking, they're just very glossy, very eye-catching. And they just do trail so beautifully here. And they also clamor beautifully. If it's a landscape plant, you just let them take over the, the forest floor or whatever area that you give it. It's going to just be a beautiful plant. But keep in mind that these guys actually grow really fast. So do prepare some space for it to grow into. All right, so actually it's got forest floor potting mix in these three pots here. I'm going to link that video up above of what it's made of. You can either, if you live in Indonesia, you can either buy it from our store or you can make your own. Either way, it's fine. You can also customize because each ingredient will be different depending on you know what you have available in your area. Here's my general purpose potting mix. Again, that link is going to be up above. So you're going to you can see what it's made out of. And 
they both will work. This is much, much airier. So I would have to water this a lot more often than I do with general purpose potting mix. But the reason why I want to do this is to show you that they can actually live in different types of conditions. So one way that you can actually propagate them safely if you're afraid to cut them, is just to, without cutting the, the plant up, just tuck them to the next pot over like that and then it will root into it. So just keep it uh, slightly moist, slightly like humid, and it will root into it no problem. Or, you know, actually with these guys, sometimes they get really bald on the top. You can always take some one of the pups and just stick it back, stick it back to the top. For example, this little uh, stolen here, this is perfect. What I can do is I can just stick it back in there, there. And it's just gonna grow into its own plant later. This is just how cool they are. They just literally propagate themselves. But in today's uh, video, I'm going to be actually cutting them up. This is a little bit riskier, of course. It's much easier if you just want to, you know, tuck them into different pots and just cut them off later after they've developed. But yeah, I'm going to do it now because I know that they actually do propagate very easily. So you want to take a cutting like this. This is actually a, a, a top cutting here. And the thing is, you don't want too many leaves. Uh, when you have so many leaves, but you have no roots, the plant, the, I mean the cutting is going to die because the cutting do need to expand energy to put out roots and also new shoots. So I would take off most of the leaves, kind of like this, and I would just lay it on top of the potting mix, like that, gently. And just keep it, again, I would uh, maybe mist this uh, potting mix every day or so lightly. Oh, and one more thing with Apishkias they hate their leaves wet just so you know so when you're watering them try to just water them in the soil level if you look over here the leaves are just beautiful glossy perfect shiny very very nice but uh, the ones that are grown outdoors where i just hose them down or where they get rained on they don't appreciate that you may get some fungus and bacteria spots on them uh, although that doesn't really bother me with because i have so many plants but this one is grown indoors and so it's got really perfect leaves that's never wet. So with these guys, I'm gonna take a longer vine just to show you better. And they are impossible to untangle there. Look at this. <laughs> I have to untangle them there. They're very, very unruly that way. And uh, with this Apishkias, by the way, I can't really, s not can't, but I don't really sell them. I do uh, prepare them for offline events if uh, I have something going on because these are plants that don't ship well for two reasons. One, they don't do well in a, a, a dark box for many days on end. And number two, they are just impossible. Look at how delicate the leaves are. They're, very, they're like begonia leaves. So it's not easy to ship this at all. Like it's gonna, you know, when doing packing a lot can go wrong. Um, I don't know. I just don't recommend this for online, uh, but yeah, but I bought all of mine online just so you know, and I do rehab them and I enjoy that process of rehabbing them. And for these guys, if you want them to focus on uh, your leaves, just take off the flowers. There's some little flowers here. Oh, this, this stem came off. So I'm going to take that off. So yeah, this is already one cutting. I'm going to take one more leaf off. It's too many leaves. Yeah. And I'm just going to stick that on top of the potting mix. Just Gently, you don't need to do anything about it. It's just gonna root. Okay, so this will make it very clear for you and it'll make, maybe help you gain some confidence. But this is another cutting. But as you can see here, down here, I don't know if this camera's gonna focus, but there are some aerial roots. I don't know if you see on the base. Oh my God, focus, focus. Yeah, on the base of this uh, stem here, that's actually opportunistic aerial roots that will turn into roots. So what I do is I just you know, place them like that on top of potting mix and it'll just do its thing. You don't really need to bury it that much. You just kind of lay it on top. All right, so here's everybody. I actually added an uh, additional pot here and this is actually just the leaf. Since they're in the Gusneria CA family, I have a feeling that they can also be propagated just by the leaf, although I've never tried it before. So let's see how that goes. So this is the parent plant. It's a bit messy here. So that's the parent plant. It's not a hard prune as I normally would do it but I usually when you cut them like that they will branch out and they will give you even a bushier plant from up top and then one thing that I want to show you is how to water these uh, it's very difficult with one hand while I'm filming but uh, if you have one of these squeeze bottles the uh, pitch gears actually I water them just like like that so they are actually really fun for me to water I love watering plants this way 
<laughs> it's like you know whack-a-mole kind of thing like you're playing a game so I, I tend to do this but of course I don't have all the time in the world to water thousands of pots of hibiscus <laughs> but another way that you could water them actually reliably well is to bottom water them so you just let them sit in a basic a tub of water yeah I do get some of the leaves wet once in a while but it's okay uh, just leave it in a shallow tub of water and let the water just get you know absorbed from the in fact I might just do that because this is taking way too long but yeah I'll see you guys in a few months to show you an update for these guys welcome to a 14 weeks update this is the mother plant unfortunately it didn't do so well I actually left it here I'm in my nursery area now we had an event so I brought this to the event they're just trying to flower here but look at what happens when you put it outdoors it's going to start crisping up a bit and also I have a feeling this is severely overwatered and also underwatered at some point it did rain quite a lot here over the rainy season and you can see some of the leaves have turned yellow and rotted off and also right now I can feel that this is actually very limp this is the sign of it being thirsty and if I held the pot in my hand it is very lightweight so it is actually very very underwatered so yeah I may bring this home and start to nurse it back to health but this is what happens when you neglect them they do want to be watered lightly every day consistent watering and to just not get their leaves wet where possible and yeah so this is the parent plant let me show you some of the others here's an update of the cuttings that we took they've gotten really massive they're doing so well look at this one here so this one's sitting uh, under a shade so it's not rained on but we do water it whenever it's dry so lightly every day this is in the forest floor potting mix this is in the general potting mix they both do well incredibly well but I did notice that the ones that were grown here on the outer shelf did better than the two pots hiding in the back because I guess it's getting less light so this is getting bright indirect light all day long no direct sunlight at all look at how these beautiful babies have formed let me show you the ones that I'm grown indoors keep in mind that they're living under this uh, shelf so they're getting very very little light actually this is a proof that you should not grow your plants especially these kind of trailing plants from the shelf if you do like maybe some philodendron gloriosum where it just needs to face one way those might work but these guys really do are they're not optimized with their growth so this is the one in general purpose potting mix it's doing really well but i have a feeling the one outdoors are much happier of course this is the one that is grown in forest floor potting mix <laughs> this thing actually it's not so bad this is actually a pretty good size i'm surprised but look at it it's facing one way it's growing towards the sun if you give this top light it will grow much bigger leaves the ones that were grown outdoors as you can see have a bit of a bigger leaf than this finally these are the ones that were grown just with the leaf they're so slow to grow but if you pull on it it's actually firm in the soil which means that it has actually rooted but see that that's one baby right there so the other should follow suit very shortly but it does take a long time when you propagate them with just the leaf I do miss the top of the potting mix every day just to keep it lightly damp but I have a feeling the bottom of the pot is actually pretty dry which is good you don't want it to be soggy wet because you may rot this easily so I guess that's it thank you so much for watching I'm at botanist on Instagram if you want to DM me on any question regarding plant care and propagation I'll try my best to get back to you Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.